John, talk me through an outstanding lesson. This is probably one of the most difficult areas that we work on with teachers. If we give a teacher a, a judgment of good in terms of student progress in their lesson, the natural question that I as a teacher would want to ask and teachers very often ask us is, well, that's fine, that's great, thank you for your judgment, but what do I need to do to make it outstanding? Or why wasn't the lesson outstanding rather than good? Now, we could say, well, that's very, very difficult, isn't it? And, and extremely difficult to describe, but that, that, that doesn't help the teacher. So what we've started to do is tease out some of the very specific differences between good and outstanding. Uh, and the best way to do that is to just illustrate one lesson that we've seen recently. This is a year nine group, uh, mm -hmm. a year nine group of boys, uh, and it was an English lesson. And it's a set four year nine group. The context is that I'd seen the same group largely of boys in the previous lesson where they were disengaged, they were off task, they didn't learn an awful lot. Uh, I was there to look at them coming into the English lesson. They came in eager to be there, they came in wanting to learn, they settled down immediately. They were clearly looking forward to the experience that they were going to have. The teacher crisply introduced the lesson with a very clear learning objective and the focus of the lesson was looking at the relationship of Shakespeare's Richard III with the Duke of Buckingham and different aspects of that, something they've been working on in the play for a while. The teacher went on to deal with the learning outcomes, but preparatory to that she said, remember boys that you start at the beginning of this year uh, with targets of level five and you know what your targets are now, remind me. Level seven miss, level six miss. Okay, so you've made lots of progress during the course of the year. Very important in an outstanding lesson to keep mentioning progress and keep mentioning the levels of progress and where they are. Rather than put the learning outcomes up linked to levels, the teacher then said, right, over to you. Uh, we've been through this process before. Just remind ourselves about the difference between a level four to uh, a level seven, which is the journey you've been on spontaneous reactions from the students. Absolutely immediate, confident, virtually every hand up in the room. Uh, they wanted to answer, they knew what the answers were, they were at the fingertips. Level four miss is describe. You simply need to say what was in the play without giving any significant examples. Good, okay, so describe, do you give any judgments about what you see? No. No judgment, you simply a straightforward explanation of what the play is about, miss. Okay, level five, anybody? Yes, we evaluate, miss. Uh, and maybe another way of explaining it, miss, is explain. Okay, you explain a little bit more about the teacher digging for deeper meaning, getting more out of them. And they did. Four or five other boys said, well, actually, we've got to be more precise about evaluate. It means this, it means digging deeper, it means giving some evidence from the text. It means starting to form a judgment, not giving a complete judgment, but starting to give your own opinion. Good. Level six. We're digging deeper, Miss, there on uh, evaluating and explaining, but we're giving far more pieces of evidence from the text and weaving those into the answer uh, based on the question that you're being asked, making it very clear what the evidence base is. Uh, and we've got used to calling that the so what factor, miss. So we, you've taught us to ask ourselves, so what, after each piece of work. Right, level seven. Level seven, it's analysis, miss. This is where you're analysing. We've learned how to analyse much more in a much more sophisticated way during the course of the year it's one step further or more than one step further than evaluating and explaining significant evidence from the passage passing an opinion passing judgments um, well done boys good okay here's the learning outcomes and up they went on the board what do you notice about these it's what we've just told you miss and the learning outcomes were exactly the same as the process the boys had gone through the lesson proceeded then with them starting to discuss in pairs how to answer uh, a particular question that had been posed to them about the relationship between Richard III and Buckingham, reading uh, an, uh, an extract from the text, uh, formulating a plan for their answer, 
knowing how many marks the answer was going to give them and how many points they needed to make, and then peer assessing each other's work. Well, actually, sorry, you've not got further than a level five with this piece of work. You need to do this, this, and this. Well done. Good level seven, and here's the evidence for it. And so the lesson proceeded. Absolutely focused on progress. Absolutely managed by the students themselves. Not the teacher evaluating their progress, but them doing it convincingly and in a very sophisticated way for themselves. John, if I took that lesson plan and went to teach the lesson myself, would it automatically be outstanding? No, I mean, this is part of the skill that we have to have in the work we do and the way in which we teach um, the people we're working with in schools to work with other people, that you can't give somebody a plan. There is no set piece lesson which leads to a good or outstanding lesson. It'll depend on the context, the group, it'll depend on the relationships that have been built up between the teacher and the students and between the students and the students. It's likely that that plan, if, it's, if it follows that process, will have all the pegs for learning in it, but it's actually the students and the way in which you work with students over a period of time that leads to the notion of outstanding progress. And that's a very individual issue between a teacher and an individual class. And one last question about that lesson. When we use the term essences, it always sounds a little bit Shakespearean and mysterious. Um, if I asked you to talk about the essence of that lesson, what sort of things would you be talking about? Well, the essence of the lesson would be the ones that we, we include in, in the work we do with teachers. It, uh, it's it's evidence for rapid and sustained, and the emphasis on sustained progress from the students, not just delivered in one lesson for the sake of an observer, but it's very clear that that's there in every lesson. It's been built up over a period of time and students are used to doing it. They're not putting on an act or a display for either themselves or the teacher or the observer. Uh, the second would be the teacher's role in intervening at appropriate times in the lesson with a considerable impact on students and their understanding of what they're doing. And this teacher did that in a very understated way. She wasn't telling them what to do. She was getting them and challenging them to consider and evaluate issues for themselves. And again, they were used to that process. Just two examples uh, of that. But the key essence is that absolute focus on students working much harder than the teacher being entirely confident with what they're doing and confident to admit that they didn't know how to do something and needed to find out a better way of doing it. We've got the stages, we know the mountain that we're aiming at. Do you think you'd be able to explain to us what processes we go through to take a school from in need of improvement to outstanding? Yes, we can put together all the elements we've spoken about so far and talk through um, how we actually do it in classrooms and in, in, in a, a specific school.